Hey, what's up, YouTube? Okay, so, Martin attacks Zimmerman, question mark? So what we knew up to this point as of today was that there was a 911, well, no, I'm sorry. There was a police call from Zimmerman on a non-emergency line to a dispatcher who told him to stop following uh, Trayvon. He, he ignored the, the, the asking of uh, the the comment there to not follow Trayvon. So what happens is he says on the call that Trayvon is approaching the car. So Trayvon was actually coming to Zimmerman's car and uh, Zimmerman got out at that point. Now what we're finding out today is that there was an eyewitness at the scene that corroborate, corroborated Zimmerman's story with the police officers. He saw two things. The first, he, he's in a, a, a multi-level complex, the eyewitness. He heard Zimmerman screaming, which is on the 911 call from other people. The eyewitness came out of the house, saw Zimmerman getting attacked and screaming, and he says, hey, this is the eyewitness saying this, hey, I'm going to call 911, at which point the eyewitness Okay, the eyewitness acknowledges that the person in red, who was Zimmerman, was being attacked by Martin, who was in the hoodie, and says he's going to call 911. He goes back inside. He hears a gunshot in that time frame and goes upstairs to his balcony and looks out over, or balcony window, I'm not, they didn't specify. At that point, he saw who was the person on top when he looked downstairs, lying on the grass, believed to be dead. And that person was Trayvon. Okay, so you have a corroborating witness that agrees with Zimmerman's story. The police come. The police decide they're not going to arrest him. This is, uh, I'm not making an opinion here. This is just what's being recorded. Um, I'm just talking about what they're saying. And I'm uh, maybe reading a little bit in between the lines because I, I think I think what's ultimately going to come out as happening is that Zimmerman got out of the car. Trayvon approached Zimmerman. And now Trayvon, I'm assuming, is probably obviously pissed off that somebody's following him around. And to be honest with him, he's, he's got kind of a valid a valid uh, reason. If, if he's just peacefully not doing anything and somebody's busting his chops, yeah, I'd be pissed off too. Now, with that said, some kind of altercation happens. The screaming that was heard was Zimmerman screaming as Trayvon apparently beats him up. Now, I, I think a lot of people are going to make the obvious correlation that how does somebody in Zimmer, Zimmerman's uh, stature of being over like 100 pounds heavier than, than Trayvon, how does Trayvon get the upper hand? I've heard a lot of comments saying that, you know, big people have better punching defense or resistance, punching resistance, than uh, less heavy people and so on and so forth. What the eyewitness corroborated was kind of what I expected is that Zimmerman was attacked. Again, this is the witness. Zimmerman was attacked while he was going back to his car or he had his back turned. Trayvon just jumped him or attacked him, I don't know. Uh, but the attack came initially as a surprise. It was not expected, and he <laughs> got floored, man. He got floored, and he probably, Drayvon probably got on top of him and just started wailing on him because it was acknowledged that Zimmerman was bloodied in the face when the police got there. So it was a wacky story. The district attorney has the all the evidence. The, all the evidence has apparently been completed and tabulated and all the details. And it's going to be read to a grand jury and we're going to know about it in a couple weeks. But this was uh, just an eyewitness that was there on the scene and it was recorded by Fox News Tampa Bay. There's a video. I'll post it in the description in the bottom. Go check it out. Come to your own opinions and let me know what you think. As I said in the previous video, this is an example of, of how it could have gone pretty bad for, for gun owners. And I can't say I'm glad and I can't say I'm happy because the loss of a life is not something you should be happy about. And I'm not.
a young young man, 17 years old, that, that sucks. Uh, but if this was a negligent killing of somebody with a firearm, that'd be really bad for us firearm owners and people who believe in the personal responsibility of self-defense. So anyway, uh, comment below. Let me know what you think. Okay, guys, take it easy.